Welcome to Mastering Life's Adventures, an educational podcast about tapping into your true self, the soul, your soul, the substance of your life, to discover what life's ups and downs are really about, and how to have a greater sense of purpose, peace, joy, and fulfillment. I am Dr. Judith Holder, your host, coach, psychologist, fellow seeker who enjoys diving into the connections between spirituality, psychology, wellness, and your everyday life's adventures. All preparing and polishing you like the facets of a magnificent diamond to be your best self. If you're craving more from your life, you are in the right place. Come, let's journey together and transforming what you know into who you really are. Mastering Life's Adventures begins now. Hi, I'm back. I'm here to talk about in this series of 2024, a new area that I thought would be interesting to seekers. And that is talking about what can we do to grow our spirituality? And this is an evolving and ongoing process. But specifically, the name of this series is Simple Keys to soul growth. Simple keys to soul growth. And what are those simple keys that you can be able to think about, reflect on, try to implement, see how it works for you as you're evolving and growing and having more connection to your soul and a greater awareness of your soul potential. And as you can recall, last year, my focus was on barriers and roadblocks to soul progress. And there was like 20 different ones that I talked about last year. Wow, that's a lot. And you know what? There's probably even more that I will talk about in the future. But first, let's go down the past road of where we've been in terms of these barriers and roadblocks to soul progress. If you recall, I first talked about the creeping condemnation. And this was really talking about criticism and how that hinders and weighs down the soul. And then we went into talking about the acquired anger and what occurs when we get angry and, and how it creates static for the soul. So I'm going to go and go through this pretty quickly because I really do want to get into talking about one of the simple keys to soul growth in this series that I'll be doing moving forward. But I, I thought it would be helpful just to review in case you want to go back and listen to any of them in terms of these barriers and roadblocks to soul progress. In episode number three, I actually had three parts that I talked about. One was related to the same topic area, weary, worry, weary, worry. Try to say that several times quickly, but I did have several comments that I wanted to make and through episodes and looking at this weary warrior. And one of it was in general talking about it. And then another, I talked in another episode about the thoughts that, that worry that happens and makes us weary um, from those particular thought patterns that we may have. And then I talked about this whole notion that, uh, that their impact on um, soul progress, soul impact is what I called it, but it was still under the canopy of weary worry. Then we moved into talking about the fourth barrier, which is constant complaining, which we hear a lot and we people do engage in it, but we never think about how it impacts our soul and our soul progress. So you may want to listen to that. And then for number five episode, I talked about sticky stubbornness, sticky stubbornness that we know we're being stubborn, but we still remain stubborn because we just want to be right or we want to uh, make sure people understand our point, even though if that point could be modified and made more clear or better by the additional information that you're having or you're taking in. Those were the first five. And these barriers were sprinkled throughout the whole year, along with movies and having guests on and they're talking about their experiences and how it relates to soul evolution. So that has been really a nice balance, I believe, in terms of what we were trying to do and get some quite greater depth and breadth of understanding the soul, the importance of the soul, and what we need to do to help it move forward, and also what gets in the way of our moving forward. Then the next roadblock we talked about was revolving resentment. And we don't realize that resentment does have a weight and, and create kind of a roadblock 
to our soul and to what the soul is needing to take flight, to move forward, to learn certain experiences. Then we talked about number nine, which was awkward arrogance. That there's an awkward arrogance that sometimes people around that person feels, but they may not be aware of it and what that means, again, to soul progress. Then I went into talking about persistent procrastination. Procrastination, we know, doesn't work well for us, but how does it relate to the soul? I talked about that. And then we talked about sinking sarcasm, that sometimes we get into the sarcastic comments that are being made, and we have to realize that the things we're saying verbally does have an impact on our soul and the ecosystem of our soul, which is the internal environment that is within us. And each of these barriers and roadblocks have an impact upon the internal ecosystem within us that is creating a cloudy day, a rainy day, a stormy day, or it may create um, hail, snow. It may create sometimes sunny, um, sunny days. But I also talked about, as you're lo- listening to the, the different episodes, that the thing that really creates the sunniness is these superpowers, which I talk about and, and kind of scatter throughout the discussions that I have on each in the episodes about barriers and roadblocks to soul progress. Then I talk about this creeping callousness that can happen. That was an episode. Another episode was around turbulent thinking. And how that impacts our ability and our soul to be, uh, for us to stay connected to an awareness of what we're supposed to learn and grow and advance to with our soul, which is really the substance of our life. Then we go into the turbulent thinking a little bit more. And that was part two and talking about some of the going a little bit more deeper into those types of qualities. And then we move into really focused around defiant dishonesty. Defiant dishonesty and how this inability or this difficulty to be honest with ourselves or honest with other individuals, how that impacts the soul and its progress. Then in 17, we talk about divergent deception. That there's a lot of ways in which we deceive ourselves, which is kind of a, a takeoff of the dishonesty that happens to ourselves because we're telling ourselves maybe things that are not really true or they're usually kind of skewed to our viewpoint. But when we really asked ourselves the question, is this really true from a soul perspective or from, from a Christic being more Christ-like in our thinking, our feeling and our actions and our behaviors, then we may say, well, that's a little bit off, you know, type of thing and how we can be able to get back on track again. All these barriers and roadblocks are just helping you to be more aware of what can really create a, a, challenge for the soul, unknowingly to our outer self, our outer consciousness. Then I talk about invisible irritability. We know what happens and how we feel when people are being irritable to us. But what about this invisible aspect of irritability and its impact on the soul? I go into this imposition imposter. And the imposition pastor, that's number 19. And that's really focused on helping you to understand that there are these qualities internally that can create kind of the sense of the imposter. And I talk about some of the characteristics of that and how it impacts the soul. And then I thought it would be helpful as number 20 that I would get into like talking about and looking into how the imposition imposter how to move that into Christic superpowers. How do you move it into Christic superpowers to help you, help your soul evolve and grow? So that was just a whirlwind of talking about some of the things that that I went through last year that I will actually put into a playlist for you. And you can find that playlist at a.com. And if you ever want to kind of have a quick way to be able to get to that that's where you can be able to do. I just went through last year of what we focused on, and this is just a small sampling, and there's probably a lot more. And as I said, I will probably get into talking about, swing back around at some point and talk about some others. But I thought it'd be nice to start something new this year as we're moving into more and more into 2024. And I was thinking about what did I want to do? What would be helpful to my listeners and seekers? And then I thought, hmm, 
Why not do something on simple keys to soul growth? Simple keys. And we can talk about advanced keys at another time. Maybe next year we'll talk about the advanced keys. Uh, but for this year, let's talk about simple keys to soul progress. And the first one I thought would be nice to talk about was personal responsibility. And when you think about personal responsibility, and we're going to talk about it in relationship to the soul and how important it is to the soul. But when you first think about personal responsibility, it is kind of the belief or the quality or the about accountability. How are you going to take actions to follow through on things that you say you're going to do? It does relate to the direction that you're trying to take in your life and what responsibilities or obligations that you're trying to hold on to do in an appropriate way, in the right way. It really involves how we're thinking about things and how we follow through on things. And what happens with personal responsibility, it it starts to build. The more that we are accountable and hold ourselves accountable to do those things that we say we're going to do, it really builds on integrity and building um, trustworthiness and doing the right thing, credibility. And if someone says, you know, can you get this project or you get this whatever to me by the end of the day? And if you say, yes, I can, how do you make sure you follow through on that? And how does it, do you think, relate to soul evolution and growth? Which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. What we know is, is is that responsibility allows us to have accountability, as I said earlier, but it also allows us to be trustworthy. And that's the quality that in human nature is fundamental. Even as a young child to adulthood, there needs to be some trust building. There needs to be the persons around you can trust you, that you can trust yourself, you know, as well. And so this trustworthiness becomes an important ingredient to personal responsibility as I was thinking about this. It's the same thing as when you're raising a child and your child says to you, can you read me this book? And you say, yes, you can. Give me an hour. But you never get back to that child to read the book. And so it's now the second day and the child comes back up to you again and says, I, can you read me, mom, dad, can you read me this book? And you say, yes, yes, I'm, I'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. And what happens with the child needs to know is I will follow through with my yes and do it and let my child know I can't do it right now. But if there's a young child, you give that child letting them know when you can. We'll read it this evening, that book for bedtime or whatever time frame that you want to give it, trust building is so important, not only for a child, but it also for us adults as well. If you're at work and someone is saying that they're going to get something to you by a certain time, you expect that, right? We all do. But what if they don't? And they didn't let you know, I'm not going to be able to get to it by the time that I thought I was, but I can be a den that time. Can we say, I, I will get it completed by tomorrow morning? So you're tr- part of trustworthiness and part of personal responsibility is, is that it's not, you're going to have to make modifications. You're not going to be able to do everything you say you're going to do at the time you say you're going to do it. There's just human nature. Things come up and unpredictability comes up. So that's okay. But you're willing to communicate and let the person or the group or whoever it may be know when you're going to do something. It's the same thing with if your spouse asks you to take out the garbage and you say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to take out the garbage. But you don't. It's these little things, these little acts that we have to realize that also impacts our soul and our soul progress and growth. And it's something that we have to be in tune to the fact that is, is that we, if our word is, is, yes, I'm going to get to that and I will get to it tonight, then make sure you put something up on your mirror or on your a door saying, take out trash. 
know, so that you'll be able to do that. It builds that bond of trustworthiness instead of this ongoing sense of you're nagging me, stop nagging me. And yes, that doesn't need to occur. You don't need to nag. But if a person says yes to that spouse or to that significant person that I'm going to do something, always try to follow through on that. When I am talking about this quality of personal responsibility, I'm actually also talking about five aspects of what I call a scene keys. These are the scene keys that people visibly see that whether you're doing or not. And there are unseen keys as well. And I may talk about that in part two. But there is a compilation of qualities and characteristics that come together that allows for personal responsibility to shine and therefore allows your soul to shine. Let me talk about the first one. Being mindful of your communication is number one. If you don't understand something, don't shake your head as if you're agreeing to it. That's the visible. But instead, ask for clarity. Be it with a boss or a coworker or a friend or a um, person of your church community or a person in your neighborhood. You're asking for clarity and you're trying to be clear in your communication with them. And therefore, it means you reduce your assumptions and expectations. You make sure they're on the, maybe it's not reducing, but maybe it's making sure they're on the right par or level of what the event or the situation or what you're saying to the person has taken place. So you're not forgetting things that you realize, maybe my expectation is too high. Can we just talk about, can we be able to do A? You know, if we can't do Z. And so, so what you're doing is you're, you're communicating to the person as clearly as you know how, and you're hoping the other person will communicate to you back, but we're just talking and focused on right now is personal responsibility. You're doing your best, and then you're asking for guidance for the rest. And that guidance that you're asking is you're kind of clicking into your soul awareness, your spiritual self, and you're asking, is there anything else I need to say here, Lord? Anything else you are, you're talking even to your soul. Is there anything else I need to do here? You know, and, and your soul says, yeah, you didn't ask this question about whether they have the time to be able to do this. We don't realize our soul promptings can come through our intuition and our intuition can be very powerful if we're willing to act on the intuition, which builds more of a communication to that in your intuition and your soul. There's a linkage that goes on there. Even when unexpected things happen or you're unsuccessful with doing a particular task, not shutting down, but opening up and opening up to saying, well, kind of, how could I do that better? And this is what you're having a conversation with your inner self. You're having that conversation with your soul nature or your Christic self. Uh, and you're saying, what could I do to do better gear? You're not getting into being angry or annoyed or frustrated about it didn't work out. It's like, okay, life is for growing. Life is for learning. And what can I learn from this? What do I need to let go of? And sometimes, where do I need to apologize for doing something or engaging in certain behaviors that really weren't to your good or to the other person's good or the group's good in any way? And so there's a degree in this mindfulness and how you're communicating with a conscientiousness that takes place. So you're working on yourself. And that's the beauty of these simple keys of soul growth is the more that you can be proactive, the more that you can ask proactive questions, the more that you have a greater clarity in your thinking and in your delivery of information so that the person can understand where you're coming from just as much as you want to learn how they like to receive information or how they communicate and you can be able to work together to have a more, a much higher level of communication with also for your inner self, you're always tapping into your soul awareness and saying, okay, wh what is missing here? Because there's this higher aspect or this higher sixth sense that knows there's something missing here. Or maybe I just need to ask, are we missing something here? 
in terms of this being more mindful in how you communicate. So that's number one. So think about that. If you have ideas or other thoughts to that, please add it in the comment section. The next point that helps with soul responsibility and our growing of our soul is admitting when you make mistakes. Admitting when you make mistakes. We can, we're not perfect. We're not going to be able to do it right. But sometimes what happens is when we don't want to acknowledge that there was a mistake that was made in a situation at work or at home or um, whatever part of your world that you're dealing with and you clearly know there was something that didn't go right, just admit to it because it allows it for a degree of transparency that the soul needs. We're moving into being more attuned to either statements or actions that we engage in that we realize that may be offensive to other people, that may not be right. Now, yes, there's some things you have to be able to know that not everyone's going to like what you say or what you do. That's true. But if your gut tells you this was kind of offensive, I didn't have to say it that way. I was trying to make a joke, but it went bad. <laughs> it, went, it went in the wrong direction. Okay. Just say, mm, sorry, I was trying to make a joke that didn't co- go over very well. Please forgive me. <laughs> you know about that. That is more the resp- responsibility of you to make the correction or, or not make the correction. But when we're making correction, we're more in tune with our soul and our soul's desire for integrity. When we can clearly know that something has gone afoul, doesn't go down the, you know, hitting that ball, you know, in in hitting that ball, it pops out of the boundary. You know, we're willing to say, that's out of bounds. Yes, let me, let me try try again. Bit up, get up to the plate and let the pitcher pitch the ball again to you. And we just try to do better and better each and every time. And in relationships, if you say something that is hurtful, that is, you know, and, and like I was using, talking about early in a joking way, and, and you're in a social gathering, but it hurts that particular um, person that you're close to, and you can see that that is bothersome to them, to them what you said, then what do you do? Then you have to be able to say, hmm, I need to apologize. I need to admit that that wasn't appropriate to say. What usually gets in the way of us wanting to do that sometimes is we want to justify that we're right. That, you know, it was just, I was just making a joke, but not at the expense of other people. We have to be aware that the soul is kind. The soul is gentle. The soul is firm too, but it's never intentionally wants to harm, hurt, or hinder anyone. When there is awareness that that is taking place, then immediately do a course correction. Immediately, especially if they're with individuals that are really, really important to you. And I would add, even if those individuals are not really important to you, but you just know that you could have admitted to that mistake that was made in that social gathering or when you're making a comment about your thoughts about that particular event that happened, that it didn't come out very well. Yeah, just be able to say that because you know what? The ego never wants to admit to a mistake. The ego persona is really the mass that keeps on saying, you know what? I'm like, I don't need to admit. I'm not going to see those people again. That might be true, but it's also helpful if you have the opportunity uh, to correct the situation to do so. It builds integrity for you and people's awareness about you. Because there's a bigger picture. Your soul, your higher presence sees the bigger picture. And in that bigger picture, it wants you to refine how you, you're showing up in the world with various people in your life. It wants you to be able to not obsess about it because that's the other extreme, but refine where you're able to, where you have a conscious awareness that I can be able to acknowledge that was a mistake and move forward with from there. And that is a form of taking responsibility, not avoiding or deflecting or justifying yourself. The third one, and there's five I'm going to want to talk about here in terms of these seeing keys 
that you can do as it relates to personal responsibility is champion consistency for the soul. That is a superpower within this whole domain of personal responsibility. It's a superpower because when we are champion consistency, then that means that we are willing to look at how we are doing things in a regular and a consistent manner. And the responsible person treats others with kindness, stays consistent with their words and actions. They walk their talk, as the saying goes, and they stay true to their beliefs and continuously wants to grow and refine who they are through this consistency. And they're willing to work on certain behaviors to make sure that they are being consistent. That means I didn't do it right that time, or I didn't say it right that time, or I could have done it a little bit better, but they're not doing it from the lens of being critical of themselves or having these inner gremlins, but they're doing it from the standpoint of, what Christ would do here? What would my soul want me to do here? What am I learning about the qualities and characteristics of my soul? And how do I now keep looking at things through that lens and not through the lens of the ego persona? After several weeks or, or you know, you move into months and whatever, it becomes a part of your character. The quality, taking one quality, for example, that you know you tend to be inconsistent around, make it, make it small first, and then you try to be consistent more and more and more. That is a, it just becomes a part of your nature. And that is very powerful for the soul and very soothing to the soul to know that you are consciously trying to work on a quality. Your soul tries to help you and keep you mindful of what you say you're going to do. But you can't get these promptings and these helps and you then ignore them. <laughs> because if you ignore them, then your um, soul says you really don't want to work on this then. You really don't want to make the change that makes you a better person. And that's very disappointing to the soul and to your higher nature consistency, as I said, is a superpower because you're saying, yeah, I'm up for it. I'm up for it to take this one quality here and make sure I put it in my phone, make sure I put it on my mirror, make sure I put it on my door as I'm exiting, that this is the quality that I'm working on for the next few weeks or a few months or however long you want to work on it. Now, the, the fourth is embracing being organized, important for the soul and the soul evolution. The soul wants order, wants, and that order can look a little bit different for each person, certainly, but generally it wants some order because order brings with it a sense of peace, a sense of stability, a sense that, okay, we've got a kind of a, a plan of action here of how we're going to go about doing something as it relates to an aspect of how we want to live our life, or all aspects of how we want to live our life. Because it, this embracing of being organized, and I think of it more as have joy in being organized, allows then for us to make sure we're using our time wisely. Tomorrow's not promised. So each day we want to live our life in an organized way, a balanced way. It doesn't take away spontaneity. It doesn't take away from things coming up that we can do, but there's some order in this that we're focused on and how we're thinking and how we're engaging in our interactions with others. It can help us to keep focus on the big picture of knowing that, you know, that God, the creator, the I am presence, the Atman in our life is overshadowing us and, and guiding us. And where there is order, there is more likely to be God's presence and God's blessings. God doesn't know disorder. That's not a part of God's world. That's a part of man's world of being disorganized. 
So the more that we can be more planful, if you need to have calendars or if you need to have something that buzzes that allows you to know that it's a time for you to do something and helps you to keep on track to your goals and the obligations you have, why not use them? Why not use them? What this ultimately does in the grander scheme of things, in terms of embracing being organized, it gets you into a flow and a forward movement, what the soul wants. It reduces procrastination. I'll do it sometime. And that really can be the Achilles heel for the soul and your progress. I'll do it whenever. But we know that in the cosmic scheme of things, there are rhythms and times and cycles to things. And we want to be in our rightful cycle and handling things. We want to be able to ask our higher self, our God self, our creator, our I am presence, what am I supposed to be doing today that honors you? And is it going to be in the best light to help? to give more service or to be aware of what maybe someone else's need is that you can be able to help with because you've been organized enough and you have the time to get in there and maybe help them. But you never thought about being organized will help to reduce your Achilles heel. Or another um, way of putting it, that the Achilles heel can be healed for the soul Because it's getting back to the basics of a beginning, a middle, and an end. That there's closure to things. That you're not going to leave things open. Or you're not going to procrastinate or you're not going to stall in between. You're going to be consistent in how you go about doing things. And that consistency is something the soul wants. Not only because it's organized, but also because you're gaining mastery in a particular area of knowledge or you're firing of those synaptics, those neural pathways that gain more momentum in the brain and in the soul. And the soul doesn't want you to stagnate. And that's what procrastination does. That's what disorganization or chaos does. It creates all this static for the soul. And doesn't allow the soul to understand, do I know to go north, south, east, or west with this decision that needs to be made? The soul can't help you in the decisions that need to be made or in the approach that you're thinking you need to take. Because where there's chaos, there's usually people are not creating a lot of still time, which I've talked about last year in my podcast. They're not creating a lot of still time. Where there's order, you have the availability to create some stillness. And in that stillness, that's when the soul is able to prompt you, guide you, aid you in so many different marvelous ways. In the process of embracing being organized, we get into meeting deadlines. And in the process of meeting those deadlines, it builds a sense, as I said earlier, of mastery, that you're not shying away from what needs to get done. And instead, you're giving it your best effort, one piece or one step at a time. Now, the fifth one that I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to end on the fifth one and take this back up in terms of personal responsibility uh, as a part two in looking at some of the unseen aspects of how personal responsibility really has a wonderful impact upon your soul growth and evolution. But this fifth one that I'm talking about in this episode is don't succumb to moodiness. And moodiness is something people can see. Right? When a person is grumpy, maybe, for example, a long day at work and you're tired and you're finding that you're getting in more and more moody because you didn't eat and you're just not a happy camper from the long day that you spent at work. Well, what do you think that impact, how that impacts your soul? How, how do you think your soul is feeling if you're being grumpy? If we, in generally, externally, 
don't like grumpy people around us. Do you, do you think your soul likes you being grumpy? I don't think so. Our soul really doesn't like us because it creates static. It creates confusion. Go back to my fourth one about embracing being organized. And in this situation, what you need to do is find ways to vanish moodiness. To be able to say, you know what? I know I'm feeling not right right now. And then being able to say, how does this impact my soul? Because I probably can't even get a sense of what my soul's doing right now because I'm, and I'm not harmonious and it's creating like tidal waves um, for the soul uh, when we're mo- being moody uh, that operate, you know, in a wave. And all these waves that keep on coming in and hitting the shoreline. And so the soul is like, I need to get out of this ocean or I need to go dormant until you get yourself together. Because the soul likes harmony. The soul likes balance. The soul enjoys being at peace. And yes, we're not going to be at peace 24 hours a day. We're not going to do it right all the time. And that's perfectly fine. But on the overall, how are you taking control of your moods or your moodiness? And being able to say at some point in time, no, I'm no longer going to be moody. I feel it. I know my signs. And sometimes we do need to know our signs of moodiness. Some people will quickly tell you when I start getting moody, moody, it's usually because I'm, I haven't eaten every, hadn't eaten in a long period of time. And so I get cranky. I get uh, just ir- irritable, annoyed about things. And you have this, you have to be the person to say, no, I'm going to get something to eat and I'm not going to get into being moody. You have to be able to say to yourself, "Ah, moodiness also brings irritability. And my irritability may even move me into feeling angry. And my anger, you know, it's like the barn door opens and you now move into all these irritability aspects that the person is seeing as moodiness, but it is all related to anger and, and resentment and finding that it's harder for you to even hear about someone else's issues in life. And instead, you just really get irritable and frustrated and you start blaming others instead of checking yourself. Checking yourself and being able to say, no one makes me do anything. I have to make some choices about what I want to do. And one of those choices I need to make is not to be irritable. And... I have control over that, even even that sometimes it may not feel like you have control, but you do have control over that. And I want to stop there and talk about, next time, talk about unseen qualities of how taking responsibility, taking personal responsibility helps anger the soul in understanding that the more we are taking personal responsibility, the soul is able to evolve and grow because we're willing to be accountable in our actions and our behaviors and our thoughts and our words and our deeds. As I said, in part two, we're going to continue to have this conversation on personal responsibility. We're going to kind of take a more deeper dive and look at some of the unseen keys to taking personal responsibility in this series that I'm beginning on Simple Keys to soul growth. Bye for now. Thank you for joining me for this episode on Mastering Life's Adventures, being your best self through soul evolution. If you have enjoyed what you've heard today, I would be delighted if you would share this episode with others. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my Mastering Life's Adventures podcast. Look forward to your joining the next episode. Please leave any comments or suggestions you might have below. Bye for now.